Martyrs is by some accounts a pretty simple film, but many of us who love it can attest to how intensely it disturbed or moved us. The first time I watched it several years ago, I was left with this strange feeling for days, like the film itself had haunted me. And I still think about it every now and then, just out of the blue. So what is it about Martyrs, which could be boiled down to a senseless torture porn that gets so under the skin and touches people so deeply? I think it revolves around one simple feeling, one that's almost impossible not to resonate with unless you've lived an unbelievably charmed life. I think it's about fast fashion and consumption. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I think it's about guilt. Martyrs is a 2008 French horror film directed by Pascal Lergier. To sum it up, Martyrs follows friends Lucy and Anna. Nothing happens to either of them, they get married, and that is the end. Or not, unfortunately. As a young adult, Lucy, a victim of kidnap and torture in her childhood, breaks into a suburban family home and kills the perpetrators. Anna arrives at the home to find Lucy and the bodies. They clean up the mess and in a state of hallucination-induced hysteria, Lucy slits her own throat. Later, Anna finds a chamber in the house and in it a victim of the family's torture. After attempting to help this woman, a group of people arrive at the house, kill the woman and capture Anna. Their leader, Mademoiselle, explains to Anna who they are. A secret society dedicated to finding out what awaits in the afterlife. And how do they do their research, you may ask? Well, they torture young women to the brink of insanity and submission, of course. The hope is that at the point of death, the person will be able to relay what they've seen to the secret society. These women chosen to be tortured are the martyrs of the secret society's cause. The film takes a turn and from here on we see Anna take the place of the previous martyr. She's tortured to the point that she transcends and finally she shares the truth with Mademoiselle. It's at this point that we get one of the most debated movie endings of all time. Everyone has their theories with this one, and every theory has its flaws. I will be elaborating on the ending and explaining my own theories shortly. But before we get there, let's have a little look at the context of Martyrs. French extremity, or new French extremity, is a genre of horror characterized by its graphic images of violence, especially sexual violence, as well as explicit sexual imagery. Supposedly, the genre doesn't have very specific parameters, and it's not just limited to French cinema, although that tends to be considered the place of origin for this particular strain of violent movies. Beginning in the late 1990s, critics and scholars adopted the term new extreme to describe the trend of graphic, sexual, and violent imagery across Europe. Notable inclusions include High Tension, Them, Frontiers, Inside, and some non-French new extreme films like a Serbian film, Brown Bunny, and the Human Centipede films. And Martyrs is considered the best of the best that extreme cinema has to offer. For such simple films, often being smaller scale and following one plot line, they often carry a lot of metaphorical value. That might come down to the fact that they are so simple that we think there must be more and look for meaning. The simplicity of them makes many of the films within the genre of New French Extremity great vessels for bigger ideas. At the time of writing Martyrs, Pascal Logier said that he was depressed, verging on suicidal, and wrote the film because he wanted to make a movie about pain. He was also heavily inspired by Eli Roth's Hostel. In an interview with Electric Sheep magazine, Lalgier said this about the film and its relationship with pain. Horror cinema allowed me to express this in a very direct way. Martyrs is almost a work of prospective fiction that shows a dying world, almost like a pre-apocalypse. It's a world where evil triumphed a long time ago, where consciences have died out under the reign of money and where people spend their time hurting one another. It's a metaphor, of course, but the film describes things that are not that far from what we're experiencing today. It's a really fantastic interview and I would definitely recommend if you want more of an understanding of martyrs straight from the horse's mouth. 
But we can surmise that Laugier's intended meaning was pretty objective. He's exploring and exposing a world of pain, the world we live in. But I see another prominent idea at play, and its red hands are smeared all over martyrs. As far as I'm concerned, guilt is the core of this film. The opening is literally her running away from something. Need I say more? Because... I will. At first glance, we take Lucy murdering her torturers as revenge. It makes sense that someone on the receiving end of such horrific acts would desire retribution, but we're quickly introduced to Lucy's more complex motivations. Lucy is taunted throughout the early portion of the film by a disfigured woman, and it's unclear if she's real or a figment of Lucy's imagination. In a series of flashbacks, it's revealed that when Lucy escaped her captors as a child, she saw another woman also restrained in the slaughterhouse they were kept in, but in utter and understandable terror, taking advantage of the fact that she managed to get out of her own restraints, Lucy runs. So she left the other woman to more torture and presumably her eventual death. This demonic-seeming, disfigured woman that follows Lucy isn't a supernatural force or even a ghost, but a manifestation of guilt. After killing the family, we see Lucy enjoy a single moment of peace, lying down and whimsically observing the movements of her own bloody hands. But this peace is interrupted when the disfigured woman appears and Lucy looks terrified again. She rubs her hand in the blood and raises it, saying, I did it, hoping to prove to the woman that she avenged her, hoping to make up for having run away and left her to die. But the woman doesn't relent. In fact, she attacks Lucy, brutalizing her, which we see as Lucy injuring herself. Lucy seemed hopeful that by killing their captors that she had finally escaped her tormentor. She was so desperate to rid herself of the guilt of running away that she was willing to murder potentially innocent people, in turn beginning a vicious cycle. Unable to escape the woman and her guilty conscience, Lucy kills herself. And what about Anna? Is guilt a part of her story? Initially, what we see from Anna is doubt. While she helped Lucy clean up and dispose of the bodies, she didn't seem convinced that Lucy's actions were just. Perhaps not believing Lucy's backstory to be real, or at least not believing this normal suburban family to be the perpetrators, which of course the children likely never were. Anna even helped the mother who survived her wounds, seemingly believing her to be an innocent victim. Only the next day, when she stumbles upon a secret chamber, is the truth confirmed. Within it, an emaciated, scarred, and clearly terrified woman with a metal plate screwed into her head, blinding her. As well as the shock of the situation, it's easy to believe that Anna would feel immense guilt for doubting Lucy. This might be why she looks after the blind woman, bathing and calming her. She's faced with the fact that Lucy wasn't lying or crazy. And for that, Anna is seeking a way to repent. In these moments, it's almost as if Lucy is the one that Anna is caring for, now understanding what she was truly a victim of. I'm doing like Barack Obama hands down here. Why do I always do that? At this point, the mademoiselle arrives, the premise is explained, and Anna's own torture begins. An interesting aside, while the film has been both praised and heavily criticised for its raw and unrelenting depiction of violence, Laugier never intended for it to be controversial or exploitative. He said, When critics describe the film as butchery, a display of guts and gore, it saddens me very much. I see my film as a rather reserved work, in fact, and I would like it to touch the viewers, 
to plunge them in a state of profound melancholy just like mine. Anna is at first resistant to the torture, but in an imagined conversation with Lucy, she tells her to let go. I think this is where the lesson of the film, if there is one, lies. We know Anna has been burdened with the guilt that has been shifted from the deformed woman to Lucy to herself, and she decides to end that cycle. How do you escape guilt? You look it in the eye. From the entry of the secret society, the film puts a focus on the eyes. Mademoiselle highlights the look on the face of every martyr who has reached transcendence, that in their eyes you can see that they have seen beyond and are truly transformed. When Anna reaches this final stage, one of her torturers declares that Anna sees nothing else around her. In this moment, she is staring directly at the afterlife. And this focus on eyes serves a practical purpose in the film, as it sets up how we perceive the last shot. It's showing Anna has reached her transcendence and become a true martyr, a witness to what lies beyond. But I think the eyes are also a relevant part of the metaphor I'm observing. If guilt is the core of this story, in this moment she's staring the root of the guilt directly in the eye. She's facing it. The same idea comes into play in the 2017 film The Ritual, which if you're planning on watching, I am about to spoil it, so skip ahead to this, this beautiful magical number. Guilt is, without question, the main theme of the ritual. A group of friends lost in the woods run and hide from a giant antlered creature. The main character, Luke, only escapes the evil when he faces it, accepting the immense guilt he feels for not having prevented the death of their friend during a robbery. He stops avoiding the pain. He stops running. And in this case, he physically looks it in the eye. The last shot of Martyrs speaks to this same idea, whether that is intentional or not. To me, the opening and closing shots are really significant. From running away, the action that brought on Lucy's guilt to start with, to Anna staring the true source of it in the eye. It tells the whole story with just those frames. We finally come to the famous ending, one that, in my opinion, finalizes these ideas surrounding guilt. Guilt. Anna is put in a contraption that John Kramer himself would be proud of and is flayed. Her skin removed with scissors down to the muscle aside from her face. She has reached the final stage, transcending our life and heading to the next. The Mademoiselle is called and Anna tells her what she's seeing on the other side. This is whispered, unheard by the audience. With this new knowledge, Mademoiselle calls the society to the house and they wait for her to share. She readies herself in an upstairs room, removes her makeup and turban, and asks the man on the other side of the door if he can imagine what comes after death. He says no, she says keep doubting, and then she shoots herself. Now... There are a lot of theories about the end, but this is the one that works for me. The Mademoiselle didn't kill herself because there was some amazing afterlife and she wanted to get there sooner. She killed herself because she couldn't handle being alive. I believe that Anna tells her of the endless nothingness on the other side. She tells her that you only have your life now, the one in front of you. And it's an answer that makes what Mademoiselle has done with hers obsolete. Without meaning, she is left only with, you guessed it, guilt. The unbearable guilt of knowing that you've tortured and killed people over and over and it was for naught. There is nothing left for her but the shame of this life. So of course, she chooses to leave that behind. To challenge some other theories, just because we can, I'd argue that if she was told she was going to hell or she'd be punished for her actions, then she wouldn't shoot herself. Why rush towards that any sooner? And if the outcome was good, presumably given the entire purpose of their operations, she would share it. Although people do fairly argue that she is clearly psychotic, so she may have just kept the news to herself because she could. 
The line, keep doubting, is crucial because the wording is so specific. Doubt. In some ways, doubt is the opposite of certainty. We've already seen one transform into the other in Anna's story. Doubt is what keeps us from having to look the truth in the eye and accept it. Mademoiselle tells them to keep doubting because the certainty is crushing. To confirm that what the society has done to people had no greater meaning is crushing. In a way, when Anna whispers to Mademoiselle, she is passing the guilt back to the right person. The guilt should never have been hers or Lucy's or either of the other women, but the person who caused their suffering. And that burden was too heavy. Mademoiselle forced people into martyrdom to make them die for something, and that something was nothing. And with nothing on the other side being dead or alive, at that point, it's no different to Mademoiselle. So, all that being said, there are some pretty clear ways that martyrs can be seen as a meditation on guilt. It tackles it from many angles. Guilt that is deserved, undeserved, resolved, inherited, unresolved. Guilt that manifests over a lifetime. Guilt that hits you like a truck. We all feel guilty. It's one of the most powerful universal emotions. Something that defines the human experience, that unease and nausea and anxiety that we all know and wish we could escape from. I think this is what makes martyrs so effective. It taps into a really simple, shared feeling. Even with the nature of the film being so violent, there's an added element of feeling guilty just for watching it. And guilt probably isn't a word that comes up a lot when you ask people what they're afraid of. But I think it's something we all fear when we're faced with it. And ultimately, I think Martyrs suggests that there is only one way to find relief from guilt. To accept it, to look it in the eye, and then to let go. Guilt can only hang over your shoulder if you've turned away from it in fear. So turn around. P.S. If you need any more convincing that Martyrs is a brilliant film, Go and watch the 2015 version and then come back and watch the original and it's about to go from the worst film you've ever seen to the best one in 86 minutes.